Welcome to Vancouver Car Painter. Today we're going to teach you how to paint your ceilings. And I'm only going to do this once because I hate painting ceilings. And I'm going to be doubled over from neck pain tomorrow. First let's get the paint in here. Why are paint buckets harder to open than drywall mud buckets? Oh, it's not too bad. I'm being a baby. Okay, we've got some nice crumbs in there from the lid. That's always a good start. So we just have flat paint here. Typically most ceiling paints are flat paint. This is a nice old paint. We're gonna find out how many crumbs the last painter's left in it. I don't need much paint in here. I do pretty much this whole thing without a brush. So we got a little bit in there for when we need it. Let's get this off to the side so we don't trip on it. Okay, right here I have a 10 mil roller. That is a 3 8 for us Imperial folks. Now I don't actually like this size roller for ceilings. I actually like a 15 or a half inch roller. This is just what we have today. These go slower. I like to move a little faster, especially on a ceiling when I'm doubled over in neck pain. So you're going to want to figure out which is the shortest width. So in this case, that wall to that wall is the shortest width. So why that matters is we're going to be trying to keep a wet edge. So I'm going to be rolling in this direction, this direction. So I am going to have a wet edge from that wall to that wall, which is going to be way shorter than if I try to have a wet edge from this wall all the way over to this wall. And why you want to keep a wet edge is that way when you're painting and you're overlapping, then it blends and it looks perfectly monolithic. What are the words I'm looking for? It all looks the same, you guys. You ever looked up at a ceiling and you can see where all the overlaps are? Well, somebody may not have been keeping a wet edge or they just suck for a variety of other reasons. But anyways, let's get started here. So first, um, I probably should have gotten my roller saturating while I was talking, but I didn't. So let's just get started. Getting lots of paint on here. Keep in mind guys, I'm a carpenter, not a painter. So all you painters, feel free to tell me how much I sucked and what I'm doing wrong. Don't hold back. Okay, I'm going to start right here in this corner. Now, ah, real quickly, I'm going to tell you guys why I don't cut in the ceiling with a brush. So first off, you don't need to. It's slow and I'm dripping paint. But why I don't cut in with a brush is you can't keep a wet edge. When you cut in the whole room and then you go to roll it, you're going to be rolling back into paint that's skinning over. And the other thing that can happen, okay, so it's not skinning over, you let your cut line dry. Then the next thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna have two different sheens. So you're going to see the ring around the entire ceiling where you cut in and then where you rolled onto. Dripping. All right, let's get going here. So I'm going right into this corner. I'm just starting here. Get a little bit rolled out, but I'm gonna push right into the corner gently. Now you can only do this if all the walls are already primed or painted. If you do this to fresh drywall, you're going to destroy the drywall. I'm going to paint this right here, pushing right into the edge. Kind of have to angle the pole to get it sometimes. I have to place this in a more ergonomic place for me so I don't have to turn my body around. Now I try to get a lot of paint on here because I like to get distance. Okay, I've spread a little paint there. Now I'm, oh, crumbs. This is gonna happen the whole time, I can tell. Okay, get right into the corner right here. Ring lights in my way. Get right into the corner right there. Now I'm gonna back roll everything. So what back rolling is, is this is where I give all of the paint I've just applied the same texture. Because if you don't back roll, then you're gonna have some paint be thicker, some paint be thinner, and it's all gonna look a little different. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, next let's get into how far am I gonna to try to go? Well, because this is just a 3 8 roller, I can't actually go that far. Boogers, oh, old paint, should have strained it. Give myself some distance here. I'm gonna go right to this corner so I don't have to do this again. 
Okay, now I'm back rolling. Making sure that that is all uniform. We are good. Let's carry on. Now because I rolled right into that corner, I can move a little bit quicker on this next one. So I'm not going until the roller is dry. That's one of the things you guys need to know. I just go until it starts applying less paint. I'm now back rolling into the previous work a little bit, a couple feet, and now I'm going back real quick. Okay, the next thing I should mention is the pressure on the roller. Man, it's hard to tell you guys how to do this and get it done at the same time. But I've made videos about how to trowel mud and when you're rolling, there's a similar sort of pressure thing. So first, let's get these corners filled in. Okay, that is good. I want a little more paint here. Reload. All right, so here's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. So right now, I'm just putting even flat pressure over the whole thing. All right, so when I'm rolling, when I'm getting the paint spread, I'm just giving even flat pressure. When I'm doing my finish passes, I'm changing the angle slightly. So my roller is going to be like this as I go this direction. And that is gonna stop it from leaving a nasty roller line, which the lighting probably isn't good enough to show you guys. So I have the pressure just a little bit um, towards the leading edge of the roller need more paint so i'm never trying to empty out the roller either if i need more paint i go back for it get right into that corner okay now i'm back rolling and i'm doing the same thing with the pressure rolling into my previous work a little bit okay that is good now we're going to get back to this side before we get a dry edge just challenging while I'm yakking at you guys. You gotta move. All right, next, where did I stop? Let's get into how to roll. So notice I am rolling side to side, like swab the deck. And I do this to reduce my neck pain, not the boogers. All right, get right into the corner. Okay, back roll. Make it all even. Pressure on the leading edge, how to paint. So the reason I'm doing this is sometimes you'll see inexperienced painters or dudes that have no pain sensation and they will roll like this. Ah, ah, ah. No, like, don't do that. Don't roll this way, side to side. It's actually a tiny bit harder to do it first, but it is so much easier on the body. Boogers, I don't know what you guys do that aren't tall enough to reach the ceiling. I guess you strain your paint like I should have. Okay, I'm getting neck pain already. I'm not even halfway done this ceiling and I'm already in like quite a bit of pain. And this is why I don't paint ceilings. It's literally the one thing that hurts me more than any other job faster. So let's get this done. Too much talking. I don't know if there's actually a lot more I can tell you. I think we uh, talked about it all. And now I gotta just roll this place out. Ah, let's get into this real quick. So I'm dunking and then I'm dragging it down. I'm not pushing up. If I smear the paint up, I'm gonna push it all over the edge and that's super cool. Don't do that. So I'm also making sure to get it really wet and then I'm also managing the drips before I get it up to the ceiling. Now where the heck was I? Here we are. So I'm trying to get as much paint on the roller as possible and go as far as I can without drying the roller out. The drier you let the roller get, the longer it takes to reload the roller and the less distance you're gonna get on your next task. Vancouver car painter, Sharon, painting tips. Paint, 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 where was I? It's hard to see 
white on white on white. Sure, you guys can't see anything, but hopefully my words help you learn things about applying paint. Okay, back to the other side. Keep that wet edge. And we started right about here. Painty paint, paint. Grind that corner while you still have some paint. All right, now get some distance out of that spray. Where are we? Here we are between my net pane and this bright white ceiling. I barely know what I'm doing. Thank God for flat paint. Who else loves painting ceilings? Drop a comment if painting ceilings is the best thing ever. Pretty soon this video is going to be about as exciting as watching paint dry. <sighs> ow, ow. Oh, that was a giant booger. Look at that. Boo care. <clears throat> Throw it on the carpet. That exposed carpet is actually a scrap. It is not sloppy drop sheeting. Take it easy, you guys. You're so judgy. Uh, back roll. Okay, we are good. Ah, pressure. Pressure. There is a Goldilocks zone in pressure where you're pressing, pushing, pressuring hard enough to get the paint off the roller and soft enough to not leave nasty roller lines. And um, so that amount of pressure is the exact amount that it takes to make your neck hurt worse. No, I'm kidding actually. Um, the less hard you push, um, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore guys. Let me paint this freaking ceiling already, okay? Jeez, so demanding. Sorry, it's the pain, it's making me cranky. That's why painters are grumpy, you guys. You know, people are like, well, the painter did a good job, but he was, he was grumpy. He was just not nice to us. Well, I mean, would you be? Look what I'm doing. You should never expect your painter to be nice. Just expect them to do the job. God, you guys are fussy. There's so many boogers in this paint. I knew I should have strained it. I'm regretting that decision. Oh, where's my wet edge? I went off a little bit. There it is. Oh my God, that is so bad. I'd be done this room by now if I wasn't pulling boogers off the wall. It's almost as bad as behind the couch in my house. I have a lot of kids, you know. That's a lot of boogers on the wall. It's not just behind the couch. It's like in the stairwell, behind their beds, in the car. Kids are filthy. I love them though. I mean, Mother Nature made me love them. The boogers? Yeah, my little boogers. My little booger wiping boogers. Okay, back roll. I have no idea where I am anymore. Blinding neck pain and lack of light. Okay, we have enough space to go right to this part of the wall. Grind them corners in. Splash and dash. Give it the mash. Okay, ran her a little dry that time. Gonna keep going. Get her done. Oh, I'm gonna be done soon and I can lay on the ground. And it'll feel good. You guys still watching? Jeez. Get into that corner. Also, this is the first coat. So as much as I want to get a totally perfect coat, there's a little bit of forgiveness on this one because I can make up for it in the second coat. Um, you know, maybe where I could blow that one too. You know, one of the other things that happens to me is I get like so tunnel vision that I actually kind of forget where I have rolled and where I haven't. And also as the paint starts to dry a little bit, it looks like it hasn't been rolled. So it's really easy to start going over the work you've already done. So keep that in mind. Try and like split the ceiling into sections and visualize where you stopped and where you started. 
And whatever you do, don't look at the ceiling while it's drying. You will think you did the worst job ever, when in fact it was fine and you gotta wait for it to dry. I've made that mistake before, looking at the ceiling before they dry. More paint. Where do we leave off right here? Get into this corner. Back roll. Okay. How's that looking, camera guy? Look okay? Look like paint drying? Okay, this chunk. This chunklet. I think one of the things I'm guilty of is back rolling too much. I get so paranoid of missing anything because it's the ceiling and I don't ever want to have to paint it again. I spend a little too much time on the back rolling. But uh, you know, nobody's perfect. Uh, I said that, I'm regretting it. But thankfully most of you guys aren't actually watching the video anymore. Because um, if you know how to paint and just wanted to leave a nasty comment, you've done that and gone. And if you are legitimately still watching... Hi. Hi. Okay, so now... We is done that part of the ceiling. So next, pick the booger. Give it a little touch up. Don't do that on anywhere else back here because it's drying now. Saturate your roller so it stays nice and moist for your next coat. And the next thing is does, especially if you're tall, is you go and clean up all those edges where you mashed that roller. So I'm just very quickly doing that and we can get right into that corner now. Clean it up. Look for any drips. You want to get rid of those because they ain't super cool. Get right into that corner. This needs a little paint right here. So at this page, at this page, at this stage, you can do this because you're going to do a second coat. So if you're touching the ceiling at all, it's gonna be okay. So I'm just getting rid of the drips of paint and the roller lines that got there for me mashing the corners. This needs a little more paint to make it awesome. That corner's looking pretty, pretty okay. Mostly just want to worry about the drips because when you sand the walls to paint those then you can deal with the little bits of roller lines. Okay, first coat. Done. Uh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you can turn it off. Well, I'm back from my neck nap, and the ceiling's actually looking really good. We've lost our filmer, however, but the last thing you guys need is to watch me roll out this entire ceiling again. First, I'm gonna check it with a light to see if it looks good enough to just add another coat or if I'm gonna need to sand it. Because to get really nice results, one more sanding would really help flatten everything down and give it a nice uniform coat. But I'm in a rush to get through that tunnel again today, so maybe we don't need to. In spite of the fact that it was looking so chunky, um, I managed to pick those boogers enough that we can just roll another coat on. It's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna knock down any little booger if I see one or, you know, any roller lines, which I would never leave, so there isn't any. 
No, we're good. That's not all, you guys. We have a paint strainer. This is the best news yet. No more picking boogers off the ceiling. Except in my house. I don't know how they do that. Alright. And now what do I do with this thing? You guys dare me to do that? Don't do it. Oh no. Oh. Well, I more or less did it now. Somebody's got to wash his hands. Ugh. Well, I'm now going to do the exact same thing, only probably about twice as fast because I'm not going to be talking to the camera. Let's get this done. Just to give you an idea though, here's a quick reenactment. Ow, ow. Oh. My neck pain. Ah! My neck pain. Ah! Neck pain. Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh! So this final coat was basically carbon copy of the first coat, minus all the talking, all the thinking, all the boogers, and the poor lighting. So it was twice as fast, but it was still all the same things in terms of back rolling, corners, blah blah blah. Anyways, let's take a look at how bad the ceiling looks when it dries. And then I'm gonna put the fans on and we'll take a look how it looks after. So this is what I mean, you don't look at it when it's drying. You can see all the overlaps, it looks brutal. So let's get the fans on and walk out of here. Well, let's take a look at it. So what do we have here? We have a mostly dry ceiling that does not need to be painted again. So two coats and it's done. That's nice. Take a look from this way. Yeah. No flashing. No roller lines. I am happy with this ceiling, guys. Yeah, pretty stoked about that. What I'm even more stoked about, though, is that my neck doesn't have to go through that again. And we can now get onto walls and trim and keep making more videos. So thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenters, you guys. There's just one of me today and a filmer who's, um, you guys don't know him. But anyways, I'm rambling. I'm just stoked that this is done. I'm happy to be making videos. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say in the comments about how you like to paint things. And also, what's your favorite ceiling paint? Let me know what paints you've done well with and what paints have failed you. So the brand that did that like flashing around the ceiling was Cloverdale ceiling paint. So Cloverdale is a local brand to hear. I have also had Sherwin-Williams, the CHB, Chicago Home Builders. I've actually had that stuff do some weird things on me too. Although I've heard other guys that swear by it. So I often buy uh, Benjamin Moore ceiling paint. I'm usually pretty happy with that stuff. I think in this case, we just used super paint. So it was just flat super paint and it looks good. I'm happy with it. It actually has a slight sheen to it. So thankfully I did a good enough job painting it that we can't see things because of that sheen. Anyways, I'm going to be sitting in that tunnel traffic. I got to go home. Thanks for watching. Till the next video, you guys.